the transition age program is considered ages about 14 and up. This is the time when students in the ESC system are just about ready to transition out of the high school education and they'll go into um, many times a post high school program that will they'll stay in the state of Florida up to age 22. But regardless, we offer this in the high school and in some of our other um, facilities that teach up to age 22. Um, this program that we that we've developed with Rob um, gives a lot of real life skills, which is why it's called Modern Skills for Success. And so it helps them students learn digital image manipulation, um, how to use specialized web applications. Uh, ultimately increases self-confidence and self-reliance and helps them how to sort of have an art-to-art -art conversation, a social networking, if you will, um, using pictures. So it teaches them that aspect of technology. Um, they also, as Rob will explain in a little while, will teach the kids a little bit of entrepreneurship and microenterprise development also. But in the meantime, um, if you're interested, I'd love for you guys to visit our website, go to Teaching Artists, if you're not one of our teaching artists, and become one of our, our um, teaching artists by filling out an application and submitting it to us. And make sure you let us know that you've gone through this little initial training. And then we'll get back with you and talk with you about you know, getting you up to speed so that if something comes available in your part of the state, that we know we can give you a, a jingle and see if you're interested in teaching this eight-week program. OK, so that's about it for us for getting started. Does anybody have any questions thus far? Or should we go ahead and move on? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Danette Wright. I'm just getting online, and I didn't catch your name, the first introduction. I'm sorry, I'm Wendy Finkley. I'm the director of programs here at the state office here at VSA Florida. OK. And does everybody know that's on who VSA is? Is there, I should say, does anybody not know? OK, so we're good there. So everybody knows we're the statewide organization on arts and disability. So we serve that population, students as well as adults throughout the state. So very good. So I'm going to turn this program over to Rob and let him do a, his overview um, of the program. And we'll, ask, we'll have a little question and answer at the end of this webinar. Um, and, and again, thank you very much for joining us. Take it away, Rob. Oh, here we go. Hey, I'm Rob Rothschild. I'm the president of the Art Thread Foundation. And I think on the phone, too, with us is Jay Klein. Jay, are you here? Almost heard you. <laughs> I'm Rob, here, too, here Rob. Here? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is Susie Wood calling from Ocala, Florida. How are you today? Doing very well. Glad Good. you're here. Good. Thank you. So our goal, by the way, if anyone's using their speakerphone, please turn, go out of that mode because it may be contributing to some of the echoes that you're hearing. So uh, today, the, the goal today is, for, is to refresh skills you already have and introduce the skills for using the Arthred Interactive Online Gallery, which is uh, what we have partnered with VSA Florida to provide. And as Wendy said, this is part of their residency program, and, and we have provide the technology side of the BSA Modern Skills Gallery. So we're looking to, to increase people's life skills, self-reliance, and of course, give them a chance to have some fun and have a, a moment of creative expression. This is part of the Art Thread Work of Art program, and we provide students and adults with disabilities an opportunity to learn about Make, uh, making art online and build some 21st century skills and just feel good about themselves. Have that moment of, hey, I made that, which is a great moment uh, for all of us. Even if you don't consider yourself an artist, you will be an artist using this program. Trust me. 
briefly, uh, the Art Threat Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. We were founded based on work at the University of Florida, where we were working with pediatric cancer patients, doing, giving them some immersive multimedia creative expression opportunities. And now we work with a lot of other organizations, and our mission is to make art and creative expression available, especially to people who could really use it. And by the way, that picture on your screen there with the dancers and the art in the background is one of your BSA artists who created a, a dance program with, with Splash, the program you're going to learn today, uh, in the background. Pretty cool. Cool. And Rob, I don't know if you noticed that the, your PowerPoint is really small on the screen. I don't know if you can put it in larger mode. You guys may be able to make your screen a full screen. Mine's fine. Oh. Try well, expanding your window or choosing full screen somehow. Try the drop downs because okay. I'm at full screen here, and that's about that's about the, as much as I can do. But everyone, uh, I'm using a new screen sharing program that I don't, haven't used that much. I'm hoping it's it's a little more streamlined, so I don't have all your uh, questions. I may not be able to answer all your questions, but you should be able to control the screen size and get it bigger on your screen. I can't help you. It's full screen on mine, and if there's a problem locally for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so we pro provide tools for folks, and the way we do it is partnering with other organizations. So we're not we're not uh, we're like the old BASF commercial. We don't make your program; we make your program better. And we do it with service education and research. And on your screen are just a few of the. Art Thread partners who work closely with us and use our technology to incorporate in their programming. And it's, we always partner with some sort of a programming goal. Uh, the Shock Communities there on your screen is one of our newest uh, organizations there in South Florida, and they have both residential and day visitors, uh, folks with disabilities. So they do great work just to sign them up. So today, we're going to have some fun. We're going to refresh your art thread skills. We want to give you some tools to map your gallery activities with what's going on in the classroom. There are some advanced gallery features we can introduce you to, and we'll try to answer all your questions. Now, normally, an art thread training is at least a half-day piece of business, sometimes a full day. So we this, this is basically a refresher, but if you haven't had this before, I want to make it clear to you that there are resources for you to learn on your own. So don't feel like if you don't get everything today that you're lost, there's lots of ways on the website that you'll be able to uh, learn on your own. So the gallery that we are offering through VSA is, like Wendy said, it's a place to have an art-to-art -art conversation. It's a powerful thing to say. So it's not words, it's art. And basically we're sharing through art and we're using it sort of like social networking, except we're using it with paintbrushes. So think of it that way. So let's go to the vsafl.arthred.org gallery. And let's start right away. I'm sorry, somebody just say something? I think no. Pat just cleared her throat, Rob. Oh, OK. Well, uh, <laughs> So, so everyone should see the word splash on their screen right now. And this is the art making program. And I'm sort of skipping to the fun part right away because I want to show how simple it is to use this and how simple it is to have a, an immediate victory with the folks you work with. So I'm just picking a brush right now, a brush head. I'm picking a color, lots of variation. Don't worry about not memorizing this. It will all become clear later. And I'm going to pick my clear tool here. And I am just going to, now all I'm doing is holding my mouse down. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Just clicked it once. But right away, I get something. So the idea is that you are going to be give a victorious moment right away to the folks that you work with. And you're going to be doing it with an art making program online. There's no mess to clean up. There's no paint. Uh, and you absolutely will always have a no-fail situation, always a victory. So, so far I set up a brush and I clicked once. Now I'm going to click again, just one more time. 
because it's so much fun. <laughs> Look at that. Somebody You're getting good at that, Rob. <laughs> yeah, after a couple of days, you know, I figured it out. <laughs> but now I'm gonna I'm gonna press I'm gonna pick one more tool and I'm gonna change it from grow to shrink down the screen here. And boop, I'm done. So this is what we call made in a minute. And of course there's gonna be millions of combinations for the way that you could potentially do this. And the idea is to get a victorious moment right away. So you can see that the, the program that, that we offer, the software, allows you to create something really fun and all, kind of unpredictable right away. Let's see if I can get back here. So that's what I want to reiterate. We nurture creative expression. We support the training and curriculum you're in the classroom with. And we have a platform to share those victories because you can share your art online. Let's get into some of the technical stuff. Yes, it works on iPads. Yes, it works in tablets. Yes, it works with any kind of control that you might be using, including switches and breath control. When you're using iOS things like an iPad, we have a little instruction sheet that you can get from the website that shows you how to use it because we are based in Flash which hmm. Macintosh, some Mac products don't play well together with, but we have a workaround for that. Hmm. So because, you know, I'm moving quickly, I'm sorry that I may be going a little too fast, but I want to get everything in here before we get to your questions. So when you go to train someone, you're going to check their computer and their browser and make sure they conform. And these days, just about everything does. You want to make sure that you have a, a recent browser in Explorer, Safari, or Firefox, or Chrome, not an old one. And it's important that you go to the right URL, vsafl.artthread.org. Very important, because if you don't go to that one, you'll end up on the regular Artthread public gallery, and that's not the place where we want to be creating art with these students in the schools. Tell them why. The reason why is that all art that goes up on the BSFL, BSAFL Arthred.org gallery is approved by an adult before it goes up. So if you're on the regular Arthred gallery, the public gallery, and we have many, we have dozens of galleries with our other partners, but if you're on the public Arthred one, Google. So, you know, kids could put up anything they want, scare each other or, you know, do something inappropriate. And so you must, you must make sure you're on that. And you'll know you're on that one. How will you know? Let's see if I can. Where am I here? Up to my browser. Yeah, there it is. You'll you'll know that you're on it because you see the VSA logo there. You should see that on your screen now. So make sure you see the VSA logo on your screen. Mm -hmm. And then you probably want to tell a little bit about what the Art Thread Gallery is. And it's important for, for everyone to know that this is a safe place to create art together, that they've partnered, the VSA and Art Thread have come together to provide this for the people that you work with. And it's, uh, it's an art-to-art -art conversation. That's the short way of saying what we do. Then you're going to have to get people to register and create an account on the gallery. Now, you can play around and not register, so don't. Don't feel like you can't, like I just did. I just got on Create Art Online, and I just started having some fun. That's perfectly fine. But if someone would like to save their art, which I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, they're going to have to register for an account. And everyone on this call will need to register for an account on the bsafl.arts.org gallery. That is your homework. Some people already have accounts, so they, they don't have to do that. But if, I, if you see on your screen this little tiny word register here, if I mash on that, as we say in Alachua County, uh, you'll see a place for you to register. And this is, this is good for the students to register, too. See, we're only getting their last initials, so we're not collecting anything, any private data on anyone, nor are we collecting anything that would be in danger, uh, or we'd be in danger of revealing anyone's identity. So pretty simple. You'll go through here. You'll agree to the terms here and click register. So I'm not going to do that now, but that's one of the things you'll need to do. 
Now let's see. So after we register, we might want to learn how to browse the gallery. So for example, here is the VSA gallery. Isn't it wonderful? Here's your power tip right now. You see this little zero over here next to the word contact? If I click on that, I can get all that beautiful copy removed so I can just see more art. So already you're a power user, you have that. So here's the art on the gallery. And I can look at this in the all art view, which is this is what we call this. Or I can look at the thread on the gallery. So we also collate art in threads. And you can think of it as if you walked into a gallery, and inside the gallery were all these little rooms. And each room had a theme, or an idea, or a color theme, or something, some reason to segregate the art in what we would call a thread. So when you post art on here, you'll be putting it in threads. But we can also get rid of all the walls and just look at all the art together. And that's what this All Art button is looking at. So if I look at all threads, now I'm looking at the first piece of art in all the different threads, or different rooms, you might say, on the VSA gallery. So look at all those threads. You guys are threaded up. So if I pick any one of them and just click on it, now I see here's a thread called Andrew. And this particular thread just has one piece of art in it. And that's common. A lot of people when the start a thread, put a piece in, and then they'll forget about it. That's OK. No problem. If I cycle through the thread views here by pushing this thread view button, I may find some threads that have more pieces of art in them. Not that many right now. Yeah, there's one with a couple pieces. Ooh, boy, that's a good name for that one. It's called Cool. I like it. So if I click on this piece of art here, I come to what we call the Art Detail page. And there's a beautiful piece of art by someone that someone has entitled Cool. And the user is Danielle S. And Dan oh, Daniel S. And that person is in Region 4. And you'll see that when, we, when you're registering, we ask you a few questions to find out what school system, what region the person's in, so we can track what's going on uh, by that information. So if I click on this piece of art, then I can see a nice big view of it. And that's beautiful. So this was made on Splash. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. How do I do that? I just click on the big VSA logo at the top here. Now I'm back to the home screen, all art. So I'm going to pause now, see if anyone has any questions about browsing the gallery. We might as well talk about them right now. Any questions? Wow. Either everyone's gone or I'm explaining it well. One of the two. <laughs> You're explaining well. Well, okay, you're gonna you're I gonna like talk about okay, Rob yeah. all the all the little icons below each of the pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that. But before I do that, I want to I want to log in now. Uh, what is it? So I want to I'm doing that because I want you all to remember to log in before you begin your sessions. So if you're working with someone on your account, or you're at having your student go into their account or create an account, make sure they're logged in, because that opens up a lot of the functionality of the site. You need to be logged in. And you know you're logged in because it says up here, welcome. And my name today is VSA-1. So you see that there, you know you're logged in. You notice when I logged in, I went to a place called My Gallery. It's an important concept. My gallery is the art that I make and I save and no one else can see but me. But when you go to the VSA logo here and to, the, to what we could call the main gallery or the public gallery, I'm seeing art that, that I posted in threads or everyone posted in threads. That's publicly visible to anyone. So you may continue to, to if I push this My Gallery button, you may continue to have a whole bunch of art saved in my gallery and not choose to show it if you don't want to. So if your students say, well, you know, this is, I don't want to share my art yet. I want to make, I only want to put my best stuff up there. You can say, yes, of course. My gallery is private. And when we share it, when we put it in a thread, it becomes public. 
So as Wendy said, there's these little icons under each piece of art. And when I click here to the art detail page, a lot of these same icons are duplicated here too. So here's one, add this to my favorites. So I can add that to my favorites. And now when I go to my gallery and I go to my favorites, you'll see there's that piece of art. So this is a way for you to build up your own collection of art that maybe you didn't make yourself, but you'd like to sort of have your own access to. So that's an important thing to, uh, to stress with your kids that, hey, you know, build up your My Favorites because there's lots of cool things you can do with that, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, you can also share this art with a friend, and that's what that little heart is there. So if I click on that, You'll see, you'll see that the system here is telling me before you can share artwork, it must be posted to a thread. So while, I, while the art is private in my gallery, the system is presuming that you don't want to share it. But if I go out here to the main gallery, something that's posted to the main gallery, I can share it with a friend. Now I see there's the artwork there. And there's a place where I can put my email address. And I can share this with Wendy. Is it, uh, what is it, Wendy? W. Finkley uh, at USF. Well, that's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> at USF? <laughs> USF.edu, USF. 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 yeah. Okay, Wendy, you've been forewarned. <laughs> New email address. Finkley, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, we all have to have Wendy's email address because, you know, we want to talk to her. Go ahead, just publicize it. <laughs> Here you go. So if I share this, this goes out, and, when, and in a few moments, Wendy should be getting an email, and basically the email will say, you have art. And it'll, you know, it'll give a link back to that piece of art on the gallery. So stress with your students that if you want to share this art with your parents, with your aunt, with your grandparents in Arizona, anywhere in the world, you can simply do a share and, and invite people to see your work and bring them back to the gallery to see it, which is an important function. So that's the share function. We looked at favorites. I can also view the thread here that this particular art is in. So this particular piece of art is in a thread called Kai. Nice. Uh, you'll also see that there's a link called View and Respond. That is the same thing as just clicking on the art itself. So let's talk about threads. When I want to add to an existing thread, I always start with clicking on the piece of art in the thread. OK, so I'm going to say that again because it's important. When I want to add art to an existing thread, I'm always, my first step is to go to that thread, click on a piece of art in that thread, and that's how I start. So I'm going to add to this thread. I like this piece of art. I like what this guy's doing. Man, it's cool. I'm going to mash on, add to this thread, and the system's going to show me what I have in my gallery. And right now, I only have one piece. So I can, I'm going to click on that. But you can see how I could find, I could filter and look for a lot more if I had more. You might have a 1,000 pieces in here. I've just got one. So it's pretty yeah, you easy. need more things in there so you can <laughs> show everybody all your favorites. I know. I know. I'm in one of my weaker accounts. Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to say OK. And the system says, congratulations, you've added the thread. We don't need to read that. But then, boom, here's the thread Kai. And here's my piece of art added to it. Pretty groovy. Very cool. If, now, if I had chosen here, if I had chosen to respond to this piece, it would have been the exact same procedure, except the, the resultant effect, go back to the thread here, would be that the art would be placed below this one I'm responding to. So it's kind of like a Scrabble game. If I say add to the thread, it goes to the right. If I say respond to the piece, it goes below. We could have labeled it that, go to the right, go below, but we kind of like the idea of respond, adding to the thread in general and responding to the piece specifically. All right, why is there an option that. there, Rob? 
because you may want to um, you may want to we want to give you the option of where you put your art you can put it to the right or you can put it below okay the concept right. was if you're building a thread let's say you you as an uh, as a teacher decided uh -huh. you wanted to build a thread so you went and you you made a bunch of art that had something to do with Easter and uh -huh. then now you can build your thread by keep going to the right and keep going to the right and then you can build a nice fat thread with a lot of art in there and a student could do this too Okay, could a student then interject something in that third position, for example, or would Absolutely. they just continue Absolutely. on with the thread? Okay. So right, this third position. If I if I if I choose either one of these and say add to the mm -hmm. thread, it's going to go to the right. If I okay. choose this one, this white one here, and I say response mm -hmm. to piece, it's going to go below, and there'll be a gap here. Okay. Which is fine. You know, all threads aren't okay. fully loaded like that. Some of them are. There are all kinds of wacky patterns. That's yeah, that. okay. And by the way, look at this functionality here, too. This is important. Remember I talked about sharing a piece of art? I can share the whole thread. So now in the email that I would send to Wendy, she would get the first piece of art, but when she clicks, she'd, see, she'd be exposed to the whole thread rather than the individual piece of art. And another important thing is the, is the slideshow. I can view this particular thread as a slideshow. So when I click on that, I now have a slideshow of all the art in that thread. Now, there's only two pieces, so it's kind of a short show. But if I was to, to grab this URL here and pop it in an email and share it with someone, that thread, this particular slideshow will go on in perpetuity, you know. When when mm -hmm. the, when the sun explodes later on uh, in our universe, this thread of <laughs> slideshow will still mm -hmm. be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back now. So let me go back. One thing about this, yeah, you got to get back to there. Oh, I see. Yeah, I notice at the back. Every time it goes, it it, it creates a new uh, URL there. So you got to go back pretty far to get back to where you were there. So let's review. We looked about, we talked about navigating the site, looking at all threads, all art in the thread view. We talked about starting to add to a thread by, let's just say, picking a thread, the thread cool. I click on the piece of art. I add to the thread. Since I only have one piece of art, I'm just going to add that again. And so you see now that you can add your single piece of art to as many threads as you want. Okay. Hmm. There's no limit to how many times that piece of art can appear on the gallery. But let's say I want to start a whole new thread. We can do that, but I think Wendy's right. I need more art. So, and I, I, I encourage you to do this a lot with your students. Don't focus so much on getting around the gallery. Get them here to splash. This is the fun part. This is where everyone goes ooh and ah. This is where you're talking to them. And they stop listening to you, and they're, and they're and they're just doing the art, and they don't want to hear from you. This is the place to spend mo most of your time. So, I am going to do something here that's pretty cool. I'm going to go to the shape tool, and that's this. By the way, uh, there's a there's a help screen for all these tools and explains everything it does. So I'm not going to go over that now. But down here at the bottom, there's the letter A for art thread. If I click on that, it's going to allow me to pick things from my favorites and my gallery to start drawing with. Ooh, like that. So let's go and let's pick a piece of art that I want to favorite. How about that cute dog? The dog. Where's the dog? Oh, this one? But, uh, no, to the, the left. That's a frog. The, the frog. angry... The one, the angry oh, bird the angry dog. Bird? That's, that's my my puppy. <laughs> that's your puppy. I don't, okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to pick something else in the for now because I don't want to draw on top of your puppy. That'd be terrible. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add this to my favorites. And why am I doing that? Because you're about to see how very cool it's going to be to do uh, to to do shared art projects. So here I am. I loaded this particular piece of art down into the tray here. Now it's in. It's on my uh, cursor. It's a brush. I'm going to make it a little bigger, and I'm going to stamp it down. So look at that. I've got that piece of art, and I'm starting with that piece of art. So imagine a scenario where, where you have uh, one kid starts, the next guy finishes, the next girl does a little more, the next girl. 
So people go around and around and around, kind of like when you whisper in someone's ear and it comes out the other end, completely different thing that you started. Well, you could do that with art. You can have someone start and have 10 people keep messing with it and see what comes out at the end. Or I could make a collage. Let's imagine that I pick this other piece, you know, and you can imagine I have a whole bunch of pieces of art, and I could just start stamping them down so you could have a collage of the class's art. You with me? Mm -hmm. If I have all these different pieces of art, now it's all the same right now, but you could create a, a collage of everything you did in the class that day and share that piece of art. Hmm. So there's a lot to do here. But let's start again. I'm going to start. I'm going to hit the new button. By the way, this is important. I'm going to hit the new button. I'm going to choose a big canvas. I always recommend the biggest possible, so it fills your screen. But how about if I say draw on something else? You see, there's that piece of art from my favorites. Ooh, it just fills the screen for me right away. So choose new and pick whatever you've got there. So now I'm. I mean, this is a gorgeous piece of art. I mean, this is really pretty. So let's say that I just want to add a tiny little bit to it. I'm going to, let's say that, oh, yeah, let's say we want a couple of birds. We'll just add uh, some birds. They're flying down here. These are low-flying birds, in case anyone was wondering. So now I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call it Circle Birds. And the system says it's saving. And it's a little slow right now for me because I'm doing the screen share. So my computer resources are a little occupied. So when you do it on your own, it won't, it won't take quite as long. But I've experienced this before. Oop, where did it go? Ah, this is a good learning moment. So where's my art? Hmm. Go to Add Art. So I just I just went here. This if you ever save something and you wonder what happened to it, you started saving, you say what happened to it? Go to the add art button and the system says you have files already uploaded. Click here to put these files in your gallery. And yep, there it is. So even though I thought I missed it, there it is. This is my add art or my save art page. So it shows me what it's going to look like in various sizes. I can edit the title. And I can give it a uh, a comment, and I, the medium is splash, so I'm going to save it. And now the system has saved it, but here we go. Here's another learning moment. I know Wendy wanted me to get to this. Look what my art looks like. It says art awaiting approval. Isn't that beautiful? Not really. <laughs> so everyone who is working here today on this webinar, if I'm correct, Wendy, Mm -hmm. uh, is going to need to become a gallery approver. And that means that yeah. you will have the ability to approve your students' art immediately. And I can't tell you how important that is because this is not particularly gratifying to me right now. I made that art. Why can't I see it? The reason you can't see it is that we're not letting any kids put anything up without adult approval. Now, I'm logged in on my account as a gallery approver, so look all the way at the bottom of the screen. You see the words gallery approver. I hope you see that, everyone. Mm -hmm. I click on that, and now we see, look, it's not the particular art that Rob was working on. There's some other art already in the queue. Isn't this cool? So somebody made this art, and as an approver, the instructions are here for you. So I'm not going to go over them, but, but you're going to look at three things. You're going to look at the title, you're going to look at the art, and you're going to look at the comment. They all have to pass your inspection. So it may be beautiful art and a beautiful title, but the, the subject may be, uh, the comment may be objectionable. So if everything looks good, I click Approve. So now on to the art that I had just made. So somebody somewhere in the VSA world had made a piece of art, and we approved it for them. Now we see mine. Yep, I still like it. If I decline it, the person gets an email that says, sorry, your art's declined. Um, if, if you and Wendy and me or whoever's working on this decides, you know what, that was a mistake, we can put it back, we can put it back in for you. If you click on certain, it goes back in the queue for another approver to look at. If three people are uncertain, it's considered declined, unapproved. 
because you may not be. You might not know. Say, I can't tell. I don't want to make the decision today. You go on search. But for me today, I approve it. I love it. And that's it. No more. Hmm. I go to my gallery, and there's my art in place of that icon. Hmm. And, ooh, look at those nice birds. Now, you may say, well, you ruined that piece of art, Rob. Man, you messed it up. Don't worry. The original is still there from the person who originally did it. So we don't, we're not changing the original. We're just adding to it in Splash. So that is an important function of Splash, either to start a new file with something from your favorites or your gallery, or to choose the Shape tool and pick something, again, you know, I imagine you have a lot more than this, uh, from my favorites or my gallery. So it's really important. You'll also notice that there's a folder here. I can actually grab something from my computer right now, an image from my computer, and upload it right into Splash. Very cool. So you can see, here's a bunch of art that I've got. Try that one. So what that does is it loads it into the tray below. I grab it. I said I grab it. Come on. I'm not sure why that's not grabbing right now. It should. Maybe it was too big. Sometimes if it's too big, it, it, the system takes a while. But I would be able to paint with that piece of art right now. And also, there's some shapes here, too, if, you want, if you're doing a teaching moment with clouds. Oh, I see something's not right here. Hmm. Let's see what's going on. Rob? Yeah? How do, how do you change the colors? Let's say somebody wants to do the circle tool. Um, how would they pick a color to use? Do they have that option? You oh, can, OK. You can choose a color wheel for just about any brush you're working with. How did you so get to that color, screen, though? Uh, if you look on the left here, you'll see that there are uh, a variety of tools. And this one here looks like a color wheel. That's OK. We're not, that's I'm one. not seeing that on my screen. Hmm. Try to expand yeah. your screen or, or make it smaller, maybe. I, I have maybe a, a wide screen right now. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll try to sh shrink my screen. Does that help? Oh, yeah. OK, I see it now. Thank you. Sure. Sorry about that. That's so yeah, okay. uh, I'll just say again, you see all these tools on the left here. They're important. Uh, as you got, I was looking, I was using this shape tool before and stamping down. I don't know why it's not working for me today. Let me go back to Create Art Online. There we go. So you see I'm stamping this down in a variety of colors because on the color wheel, I chose variation. This is a really powerful thing. If you want to have unpredictable results, you can get all your, you know, your brush will stamp down in a bunch of different colors. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do something figurative, turn variation down to zero, pick your color, and now you know, you're just getting that one color. So a lot of kids will go, no, I don't want that variation. You know, I'm, I'm drawing the sky. I want it to be blue. Don't make it purple. So you would just go to color and turn variation off. And you also have opacity, which is also a great learning moment. What does opacity mean? So you can see that it's, it, it's, uh, it's you know, transparent, basically, or to some degree. Mm -hmm. Rob, you show them how you, you can actually upload a JPEG. Yeah, I will. That's a good idea. So uh, what I was showing you here in this folder, it's a similar procedure. If I go to Add Art, and now the system gives me, again, there's some instructions here, so feel free to use those. If I want to upload art, I choose that. I hit Next, and I I go to the Choose File button, and now I'm looking for something on my computer that I want to upload. So this is a lot of splash art here. But it could be anything. It could be a photograph that you took. It could be anything at all. Here's some kids drawing. Let's try that. I hit Upload. And again, don't be alarmed, but the system slows down because I'm doing this screen sharing here. So now the system says, you uploaded successfully. Click here to continue with it. 
I can do that, or I can continue to upload a whole bunch of files. But eventually, I'm going to have to click here, and then I'm going to have to save them. And you remember we were on this page before when we saved the splash file, you know, the splash art that we made. And I'm going to give this a name, kids, and let's call it fun. And I'm going to hit save. And there I am. Oh, it's awaiting approval. Okay, so let's go approve this now. Here's another teaching moment for us. Is this, can we approve this art? What does the team say? Yes, by all means. Yeah. No, the answer no. is absolutely 100% no. <laughs> no. Why is that? Because we're not going to have the images of children's faces on this gallery. Uh-oh. You know that the state of Florida would not be happy with us if we put up kids' faces. So okay. if people, I know we would love to, but photos of kids, and Wendy, correct me if I'm wrong, photos of kids is not, you don't, you cannot approve mm -hmm. that. Now what we have done is we have uploaded, we've allowed students, this is really kind of fun for the older students, to upload their image into Splash and edit it so that you no longer can recognize their face. And ah, then we've allowed them, so, so, you know, they put, beards and mustaches and, you know, completely alter the look of the face. And then we've allowed that to happen. There you go. Mm -hmm. So while we'd like to, because of this is so tied in with the, the school system, we would have to decline that art. And, the, and the, you know, I, got, I just got an email saying, sorry, but your art has been declined. But I do want to throw out that introducing photography into this program is a really way, a cool way to incorporate that into the into the residency. And we've done um, some wonderful exhibitions with that when we've partnered with museums where the kids actually go out, take some disposable cameras or whatnot, go in, and out into the field, take some pictures of buildings and whatnot, upload it, and then we let them edit and use it as a graphic design program. Hmm. edit, and yeah. then we print them out and frame them, and it's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, any photography is great. It's just we just don't want the students' faces. That's all. Right, no faces, right. Mm -hmm. But like here, this I think this might be a – yeah, there's – look at that beautiful photograph there that's up on the gallery. This is on the VSA gallery. Wonderful. Hmm. Cool. No problem with that. Hmm. So let's see. I just want to come back here and make sure we, we, uh, we, we worked with my gallery a little. You learned about threads, inviting friends through the share function. Oh, yeah, getting help. This is a good thing to look at. So back on the VSA gallery, I wish I could spend some time learning a little bit more about this on my own. So I'm going to push the Get Help button. <coughs> here you got a variety of resources. Uh, so there's all this written help here. If you're the type of learner or your students are the type of learners who like to read and learn and take their time and just kind of really study it, this is, this is for you. And you'll see that, for example, all those icons we talked about, they're all defined. So everything is here. If you're the type of learner who would prefer to, to watch and listen, we have tutorial videos for each of the basic functions of the gallery getting around the gallery, viewing threads, registering, adding art, which includes, uh, you know, the saving process that I talked about, starting a thread, responding to a thread, and sharing. So go ahead and watch those videos. Encourage your students to do that, too. We also have a complete page for Splash. So this goes into depth about each one of those icons you were looking at at the screen choosing the colors, the names of all these tools, which is a cool thing, the sling tool, the pen tool, uh, and the flyouts that come in at the bottom when you choose these tools. Lots of really cool information, including how to make a uh, collage. There's a really cool collage that we made as an example. So that is uh, information for you on in a variety of different ways. Also, there's a PDF file here which tells you how to use Flash on an iPad or Android tablet or an iPhone. There's a different browser called Photon, 
that you would download into those devices, and that would enable Splash to work because Splash is based in, the pro, in a program called Flash, and uh, Adobe and, and Apple uh, have a continuing little spat with each other, and they don't allow it to work. Apple doesn't mm. like Flash. So yeah. is this an app that you get? Yep, yep, it's an app. In other words, Rob, with my iMac, since I don't have a PC, this would not work without this download. Without the download. Uh, great, great question. No, it'll work fine on a computer. Okay. All desktop Macs work just fine. Okay. It's the it's iPad and iPhone gotcha. and some Android tablets. You know, tablets okay. are a great way to do this. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. You can you can draw right on them with your finger. But mm -hmm. if you're on the computer, you're fine. You don't need to do this. Okay. And I, if you've okay. got a computer with a touch screen, that's mm -hmm. really fun. That's yeah, laptop. I'm bad. You guys have those. You know, I've got a touch screen laptop, so I feel pretty cool. lucky that right now, I mean, you guys can't see. If you had a camera here, you'd see I'm putting my finger on the screen now. I'm not using the mouse, and I'm drawing cool. with that. So that's a lot of fun. Kids really love that. That's, you can't go wrong with that. Hmm. Look at that. I'll give you 10 grand for it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at, I'm going to, by the way, let's just look for fun at a couple of these tools. So what I've done is I've grabbed the sling tool with the box on top of it. So basically while I'm picking here sort of a brush head here in this window, the handle, the behavior side here, this is the wipe tool. And actually, let me start new so that you guys can see. Oops. Don't choose small. Choose big or huge. And now you can see the brush is animated. The colors are changing. What if I want to spread this out a little bit? Oh, I like that better. You see, I can, I'm sort of making these little extrusions with this brush. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Awesome. So you can see how some kids, especially kids, you know, a lot of kids in the autism spectrum, kind of interesting how immersed they get in this and how they immediately understand that this is a, that making a piece of art is a series of moves. You know, good artists understand that if you're doing something complicated, you have to start with the background and kind of work forward. Well, with Splash, it's a series of moves, too. You know, I'm going to pick this brush. I'm going to pick this thing. I'm going to pick all these things. So that sequencing activity is a great learning moment, and a lot of these, a lot of folks on the spectrum will, will just sort of take to it immediately. So you'll set them going on this and come back an hour later, and they'll still be deep, deep, deep into it. Let's try the uh, the crazy brush here. So this is the the brushes. If I start swirling my mouse around the screen, I get these unpredictable results. Kind of looks like something out of the Matrix or something. So the, fun, the thing to do is encourage kids to experiment and have fun. Splash was made by designers who make games, not who make art-making software. Their philosophy was, this is a game. So there's no instructions. The only way to learn is to play. You have to play. Ooh. Really. I can undo one move, too, by the way, with that undo button, or I can redo it. So I've been doing a lot of talking. It is one hour into our allotted time. Let's open the floor for questions now and see if I've missed something crucial. So who has a question? Rob, I have a silly question. No, it's not a silly question. Has art thread art ever been transferred to for class students or whatever? Is this something that would be feasible to do for a <clears throat> teaching artist such as myself? I'm sorry, I missed something. What is the art? What, what what was the? What did you say? Is the art? Oh, I was just asking if if art thread art has ever had ever been uh, put on T-shirts. For example, if I were to be teaching Splash to a, a classroom of of students, could we put those on T-shirts? Could sure. those be done Absolutely. by a screen printer? Great Absolutely. question. I mean, just, you know, I think it would be just a wonderful uh, reward for the class, for example, to all have T-shirts of their uh, composite piece of artwork. I don't know. Just a thought. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. I, I and, Rob, are you, 
Okay, and asking a completely different question. Are you, Rob, instrumental in uh, having computers, having the schools, for example, having computer access so that I, as a VSA teacher, could go to that class? Or is this something that I would be doing at home with a no. student that's in Timbuktu? I don't know. I'm, I'm, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know that I'm, I'm going to answer that question okay. for you. Um, okay. Who am I speaking with? This is, this is Susie Wood, Wendy. Susie, yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. um, hi. Oh, no, if, if, we're, if we put you out into the field, uh -huh. we will make sure that you're going into a classroom Okay. That has already been approved with enough computers for every student or every two students, and they have already been set by their media specialist to have computer ac uh, uh, okay. online access. Okay. So, no, this is not something that you would do remotely with anybody. You would be I right see. there teaching right the program, and them. more than likely, they would have a computer. Ideally, they would have a computer that would be set up to a teaching screen that would be that so that you would be doing just what Rob is doing today on a teaching screen and then the kids would then follow you through gotcha. the moves now not all of them do that we've got a couple artists that are online right now or with us that have gone into the classroom and haven't uh, been afforded that neat little luxury and they've had yeah. to just walk around and get right. each kid registered and then teach them, you know, with one of the laptops and have them gather around and you show them, you know, how to do each of the different projects. Yes. We, this, we, when we put you into the classroom, we also give you a pre-approved curriculum map so that you'll know day one we should do this, day two we can do that. You can vary from it, but just uh -huh. so that you have a basic idea of how we want to see this progressive learning happening. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we we yeah. fit you with all the tools. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. All right. Rob, you've, you've else done a questions? fine job in, in introducing us. I I know nothing about Splash, and uh, uh, this week I'm going to get on it and learn how to use it. Yeah, everyone's homework is if you don't already have an account, register, create an account, and start playing around and get yourself yep. up to speed on using it. Okay. Start saving pictures, you know, doing it, saving your pictures into your gallery, saving, um, you know, perusing it, finding things to put in your my favorites. Remember, my gallery is different from my favorites in that my gallery is only the work that you've created and uploaded. My favorites can be anything that you find anywhere on the site you can load up into your into your gallery. I mean into your my favorites. Okay. So that's the difference of those two. But if anybody any of you guys are really serious about being a teaching artist, which we hope all of you are, then I'm gonna hook you guys up. You know, the the next step would be for you guys to email me. Um, my email again is W F is in Frank I N K L E A at USF dot edu, and you would let me know. Yes, I'm interested, and I will make sure that there's somebody in your region that you can, you know, get a little bit more in depth into this. You know, mm -hmm. try to get one of our regional coordinators or one of our other teaching artists that knows the program a little bit better. Maybe to meet you at a Starbucks or at your home or even online, just sit and chit chat, you know, where you could do it over the phone and talk about all the little nooks and crannies of the program so that you really feel comfortable in case we call you um, and say, gosh, we've, we happen to have, you know, something in your county and they, they would love to do an art thread residency. Are you available? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How am I doing? That's good, Rob. I just <laughs> <laughs> you have a touch screen? <laughs> hey, Rob. No, 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 question. no, it, no it's at usf.edu. <laughs> <laughs> Should I not quit my day job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rob, does Flash have uh, type type uh, uh, capability? Can you yeah. print the no. name? Oh, no, you have to do look just like I'm doing. You're just going to yeah, look yeah, okay. as me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. No. And you, the, the you, writing you, tool is a little bit difficult to use, but it takes a lot of practice. Okay. All right. But there yeah. is one on Splash in the Splash application. Yes. Yeah. You're just going to draw okay. like I just did. You're going to draw with a uh, okay. You know, with a pen tool. You're just going to draw. Okay. Gotcha. If I had gone to penmanship class before this webinar, <laughs> I would have done a lot better. <laughs> well, we could see you didn't, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Kind of sad. By the way, is there I'm anybody the else that that has any other questions? I'm sorry. It's okay. Just on the screen, there are some some things to think about. You know, when you're working with the kids, like Wendy said, you know, and we want you to build a thread if you can during your eight weeks, so you can have a you know a record of what you did. Go ahead, Wendy. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. So these are great creative ways, and we're yeah, we definitely need to talk about those. But I just want to make sure everybody um, has all their questions answered. That's all, because I know we went through it very quickly. And, and it's probably a little overwhelming when you first look at it, but it is super, super easy once you start to play with it. And Pat York, um, one of our regional coordinators, is on with us right now, and she can vouch for it, right, Pat? Yeah. Uh, when Originally, when I took this training, because I'm not an artist and because I'm not a techie, I was... Uh, I was so upset that I was going to have to do this. I was really just, it took me out of my box to say the very least. And I've taught the class, oh, I don't know, seven or eight times. And I absolutely love it. It's so much fun. It's easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And the kids love it. The teachers love it. So it's an easy sell. Um, my suggestion to you is get registered. Um, go to Splash, make a bunch of art, save it in your gallery, start a couple threads, and then also um, do a lot in your favorites. Mm -hmm. okay. And for the people that are close to me in Ocala, we can get together at my house and bring your computers over and we can do a, you know, we can have a training session. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thanks, Pat. That's wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Anything else, Rob? No. Uh, except Wendy, you know, uh, we'll have these uh, these guides that are on your screen. We have a training guide and checklist, which kind of reminds you to go through the steps. There's a guide for the gallery, and all this will be available through Wendy. And if for those of you who want to go into uh, uh, the gallery approver uh, steps, we have an administrative guide too. So there are other things. Can I make a comment, exactly. Wendy? Sure. Um, for those who have um, participated in today's webinar, if you could send me a shoot me a fast email at dmiller, and that's d e e miller at usf.edu, I'll put you down for the um, professional development um, for today. Could you repeat your email? It's d miller d e e miller m i l l e r at usf.edu. Thank you. You want me to draw that on the screen in my in my fantastic no. style? <laughs> Come on, man! Tough audience. Very good. All right, Rob. Thank you so much for giving us our review, and um, and I look forward to seeing a, a bunch of new faces on our teaching artist list that are capable of being called. Um, we, I know we are very lacking up in the Panhandle. We're very lacking in the Miami area. Uh, where else are we? The that we we've talked about over on the um, Space Coast. I know we could use a few people in that area. So do do let us know. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone. We really appreciate you getting involved and. Just want to say to the new folks, welcome to the Art Thread and VSA family. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Rob. Good presentation Thank today. You, Rob. Great. Thank you.